this go overnight because the wood was wet. Remember, we boiled it, so I knew it would take longer um, for the glue to dry. So I didn't want to risk it, plus it was late. So let's take a look, see how this goes. And we just got two pieces left. Yeah, that's all right. Let's see. Nice and curved. Now we just do the same thing on this side here, and then this keystone piece will go in last. And uh, I'm just going to skip ahead to here because you've already seen this before, so I'll just glue this up. All right, well, I was debating whether to do this or not, and I th I'll try it. What I'm going to do is add some wood so that there's a rise right here. It's going to be one on the bottom, the top, the left, and the right. And uh, it's just going to be a little bit of a wood add-on so there's a little bevel there. And uh, you could sand this down lower if you want, but you're going to have to go all the way around. So I'm just going to add wood. And uh, I drew this up just now, so I'm going to cut these pieces out with scissors. Um, cut out the shape and then use a belt sander to sand this down into just a really flat piece. We'll see how it works, but I think it'll look good. Let's uh, try it out. Here's the piece all sanded down and I did it with the wood grain running this way. And uh, this high part right here is uh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So it's really not much. And on the edges you can see it's kind of slivering there. I went thin enough. You can see light goes through it. And uh, you really want a, a fine edge because uh, it's just a subtle rise. That's all it is. So going to put this on now. Hey, this has been on long enough. Let's take a look. Now these are going to be glued down, these pieces. So I might have to chisel them off because uh, I'm sure a lot of glue seeped through. Yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm gonna clean up this transition here where this angled piece meets this flat part here uh, just with a palm sander. And uh, I'm not gonna ride the top because the top has got that nice edge to it and I want to keep that sharp as possible. I'm just going to go back and forth on this part here. Well, I just spent the last few minutes showing you how to cut this in and the camera uh, battery died and it didn't record anything. So let me just go over it again really quick. Um, what you're going to do, imagine there's nothing here. It's all filled in and the paper's still there. You just cut straight lines there, right in the middle, cut another deep, deep, go down deep in the middle, go down deep, and then come up shallower towards the ends here. Okay, and then all you do, and use a very sharp, just get a new one. That way you know it's sharp. New uh, blade on your X-Acto. And you're just gonna start shaving off, going deeper and deeper. Just try to keep your Knife moving in almost like a chisel. Get a big long straight cup so it's not so wobbly. But if you botch it, 
we're going to use wood filler anyway. So that gives you another chance to uh, clean it up, make it look right. All right, next here's what I thought we'd do. I have a 60 grit on my palm sander here. And I'm going to take this and sand it down just on this edge. So I'm going to keep this height here. I'm not going to go to here, just sand this down more angle. And it'll make this shield look a bit more curved. It'll take off a little bit of weight. I mean, I might go down an eighth of an inch. Okay, I just finished sanding it just a bit. I mean, it was hardly even a couple minutes here, maybe maybe even less than a minute. And uh, I'm happy with it. You can see shield's coming down and this is coming down more. And uh, it just adds a nice um, extra uh, look to it. You know, it doesn't look so rigid and stiff like a right angle there. And now to keep these edges sharp, because with, <coughs> excuse me, that's a lot of dust. There's a lot of um, wobble with the sander. I'm just taking a piece of uh, sandpaper, wrapping it around the wood, and uh, doing one side, I'm not going over the corner. I'm trying not to touch, you know, I'm trying not to turn it. Just keep it at this straight angle. And then I go to this side, back this side just so I'm straightening that edge here might not be terribly important because it's going to be a, a little bit masked by the uh, grooves that we got to put in there but when you're refining all these edges if you do it this way try to make them at a nice point Okay, now I'm finishing it off with a 220 grit. Then I'll do some hand sanding. So now I'm gonna put in these three arrowhead carvings. So here we go. All right, so I think I figured out a good way by the time I made it to this third one to carve these out. I'm holding this, you know, almost like you're gonna just stab somebody. <laughs> and uh, sounds a little violent, I know. And I can put a lot of force in here because this right here, remember, is poplar, not pine. I put poplar on the top. I wanted a harder surface. So anyway, I I'm holding this in my fist here like this and I just yank it out. Now, the, uh, the grain, is going this way. So I can't carve this way. I have to carve this way. So, and uh, it's just a lot of force you're going to be putting on. Just to get this stuff out. There's no easy way to do this that I know of.
moving along. I cut all these notches out, cleaned them up. I even used a, uh, a file, a little bit of metal file, just to get the edges a little straight, you know, nice and sharp, as sharp as you can. It's, it's not going to be perfect, but uh, just go slow and it'll turn out well. Now I have the template laid here on the inside, and I'm just going to cut in some marks for this uh, little snake shape pattern to go in. So I'm going to do the left and the right. That way I know exactly where to lay it out. Um, I'm using a knife just to scratch into the wood, the corners here, and then I'll use a pencil on the other side um, just to draw them up. Okay, now I want to take a second and explain um, this shape here, how to make it. My first attempt, I cut it out of one piece and I tried to sand it, but it's just impossible. The closest I got was this one here, and uh, that wasn't easy to do, but this one piece is possible. The rest I decided, okay, I'm just going to I uh, use the scroll saw and just cut it up into sections, and then I could sand the um, bevel down, but uh, then I, I'm just not happy with the way this is working out. So on this one I'm going to try uh, something new, what I'm going to do here. Because this, uh, sanding the edges on this is nothing like these because you can't get the sander into these corners here. You can do all the outside ones, but not the inside ones. So, uh, what I'm going to do instead now with this is, is cut out each shape and this is just scrap. I'm going to put it on and do all these individually. And uh, the grain is all going to go like this you know, follow the long edge of all the pieces. So I think that'll be an easier way to do it. And I'll just sand all the edges down so they all match each other. And then we'll put it on. I can't think of an easier way to do it. Now, if you're gonna do this simply, um, I would cut this out and um, just have no bevel on it. If you just wanted to make a shield, you know, not as detailed, but I wanna put the angles on. And So we'll see how this goes. But this is uh, the more complicated part of the shield making this is kind of a pain, but we'll try it anyway. So here's all the parts all laid out and I'm just going to go to the scroll saw and we'll just skip ahead and try to lay them out on the shield and see how it works, see if this way is better. Well making these parts was seriously not fun. Very difficult. It's better than the uh, other way I tried to do it, but it's so difficult that unless you're pretty good uh, you're, it's, I don't think it'd be worth trying. So it actually makes me consider uh, casting some of these out of resin. And uh, maybe if you're making one of these, I'll sell a little kit with uh, this kind of stuff in it. And you guys can just buy a little kit of these little parts. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but I mean, it wasn't fun at all. I didn't enjoy it, but it's better than, um, that worked out pretty good. I just got to glue those down. It's better than this way, which uh, it's kind of sloppy. So I'm just going to have to scrap that and do this side over just like that side. But um, yeah, that was tough stuff. Seriously. Put some glue on it and uh, see what uh, we can do here. But yeah, maybe uh, um, some sort of cast piece would be better because it, it took so long to make this. Uh, I just can't see many people, you know, going through all of that to do this. Okay, I'm going to have to tack that down with some. Let me grab the gun. You're kind of committed once you've nailed and glued something down, so... I think we'll just do the best we can. And who's calling? That's probably my brother. Usually try to turn this off. 
this is starting to get a little bit out of alignment, but I think we're still okay. Nail it down. Let's let's see what we can do. There we go. All right, let's tack that one down. What really helps having this uh little nailer here. And this last piece on this side. Good. All right, last three pieces. And the very last one, it's obviously not going to be nailed because that thing is tiny. There we go. Let's get going. Make sure the glue is at the tips here. There we go. Ah. That's pretty good. Right there. That's nice. That piece fits beautifully. Let me get this down. Good, good, good. Last one, just a blob of glue. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to do um, some super glue. If I don't get it on my finger here, let me uh. Whoa, that's a ton. That's an absolute ton of glue. Yeah. I'm just rushing, trying to get it to go. Okay. Alright, now I better hurry up and uh, wipe this down. So here's how I make these. Extend the mark down from the center. This is the high point. And so you're going to sand down from the high point to the edge to the edge. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, do this edge, this edge, like this, and leave the middle, and then do this corner, this corner. Then I can hold it on the side. I think that's the easiest way. Now, I'm going to just remove a lot of material with this first, but you'll kind of see what I mean when I get going here. Okay, here you can see this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner. Now I can go and do this edge, this edge, and that seems to work out great. I'm going to stop before I hit that center line. All right, well, this is a 60 grit, so I still have some sanding to do on another one, but you can see. Worked out pretty good. So I'm going to do the uh, rest of the big pieces on 60 because it'll take too long on a uh, higher grit like this. I don't want to remove a lot of material on uh, on some sandpaper that's too fine. So anyway, that's how you do it. I'm going to get going and we'll skip ahead. So I did all the rough sanding, now I gotta go down and do it a little bit finer. Actually, I'm gonna just jump to the finest one. Why not? And uh, we'll see if we can get this part over with. This is not the fun part of the project, I'll tell you. All right, man, I tell you what, if you've done this whole shape, you've earned it. If you made it like this, this is tough stuff. So what we're gonna do is now attach this one 
And this side came out even better. I guess it's all the practice I've had now. But this one came out really good. I'm happy with it. Um, but because of the curve of the shield, let's see. Let's lay these out just for fun. We're going to attach them real soon. Okay, like that. And where's the tiny piece? Man, this little tiny one, that is tough. So I'm going to have to clean up the rest with a, a knife. Once it's attached, I can just shave it down. But this one here, I don't know if you can tell, it's rocking back and forth. If that bugs you, because it's going to be hard to clamp down on a curved shield. If that bugs you, let's try this. Let's see if this works. I'm going to take this um, sandpaper. Now let's see. Let's attach it. I'm going to staple it where it's not going to matter. Just to stop it from moving. So let's, uh, right about here. And here. Hopefully I got that in the right spot. Now this piece is going to go right there. So because this, the uh, sandpaper is down, the sandpaper is going to be in the right spot. So if I, as long as it's parallel, as long as I'm doing it in the right direction let me flick this up into yeah as long as I keep this parallel move it back and forth it'll start taking on the shape of the curve even if it's just a little bit you can see right here is where all the sawdust and debris is nothing over here so I'm taking off the middle underneath all right that should be good enough If you have a uh, shield that's more curved than this, that might really help you. This one isn't terribly curved. <sighs> terribly meaning a lot. Some paper off. Okay, so let's just glue this down the same way we did before. So if you're wondering how these things work, um, how you put more in, just open it up. And now these pins come in a strip. There's no heads on here. It's just like a straight little shaft of metal. And uh, just slip them in like that. And <clears throat> there is a top and a bottom. This one is more, you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but this is like a arrowhead. So that little um, arrow there shows you which way it's pointed. So it goes in like that. And that's it. I don't want to put any pins in here because I still have to shave this down as well. So I'll just let that kind of sit. Okay, now let's wipe this down. If anybody out there watching this, if you guys know of a better way to make one of these, let us all know. I mean, it is tough. It really was. It wasn't uh, something a lot of you are going to be able to do if you're not experienced with power tools. But if you take your time, it's a lot easier if you have the time. All right, that seems good enough. I think we got most of the bits up, so I'm going to let this dry. Here's the back of the shield and I was just double checking with uh, screenshots of the game and I realized that there's some parts that are in incorrect. There should be a notch here, these should be straight. So I'm redesigning the um, template here. Let's see, I'll show you uh, here in Illustrator. Maybe I should do a video on how to do this kind of stuff. Maybe you guys are interested, I don't know. So this is Adobe Illustrator and um, here I'm laying out all the blueprints so you guys can download them and print them out. But um, you can see the shield that I based, um, that I made the blueprints from um, look like that. And it really should look like this. Let me go to some screenshots. Uh, here you can see some promotional artwork. See the corner here? Let's see, where's my cursor? That's rounded. That's really not how it is in the game. Let me go 
find one that shows the back of the shield. And if anybody knows a paper craft for this, I couldn't find one, but those help out a lot. See right here, it's got kind of a notch, and these are straight lines, stuff like that. I think there's another one. Uh, here's a one. I don't know where this image came from, if it's a shot from the game or not, but you can see you're going to find, based on what you're looking at, um, different styles of artwork for the shield. So you've got to be careful. If you're going for exact, and I'm trying to make this as exact as I can for you guys, but I might do a little changes, but I've already gone so far on this that I might keep some of it rather than try to rip it up and start over. So we'll see. But um, I'm going to redo some of the template for the back. So it won't look, when you download and print these, it won't look like you saw me start with these curves and stuff like that. Anyway, I thought I'd explain that, so I'm going to make a few changes to this. I thought I'd just explain what was going on. But yeah, if you if you want to see how um, to redraw stuff like this in Illustrator and come up with your own blueprints and plans, let me know. I'll do a video on that for you guys. So anyway, let's get back to work. Okay, time for an update. And uh, I just got back from the hobby store again, and I couldn't... Get myself to use this um, press board because uh, too big of a risk that um, these little points are just going to get knocked and chip off. So even though I cut all this out, I'm not going to use it. Um, it goes like that. Uh, what I did was get some wood. It's the same thickness. It's three sixteenths. It's really thin. Same thickness as that. And uh, I'm just going to cut all these out. This was. Uh, I see you get 40% off if you use your phone coupon, so five bucks roughly. And um, anyway, time to sit down and cut this out. And uh, again, if you don't have one of these saws, you just use a little hand hacksaw, a little coping saw. Well, after a massive amount of sanding, these pieces are done. So I sanded over the edges, so again, there's not a sharp angle on the top. They could sliver and catch, plus it just looks nicer. And uh, I'm really happy I did it, even though it took all afternoon to cut all these out and sand them down. It really took a lot of time. But uh, so we're gonna ditch this old uh, particle board stuff and uh, glue down these pieces, which will look nice because it'll just give it a little bit of pop. This is, uh, if I remember, 3 sixteenths. You know, I I'm thinking, even you could go thinner if you wanted. I mean, of course you could just paint it, which is what the shield has anyway. I don't think there's any relief going on, but um, so so let's uh, get started gluing this down. Okay, so here's the template, fits in there. I just did a little mark here and here for the head, here and here for the body and tail. I'm gonna put these two pieces on first, then gonna go back to the template, make some marks where to put the wings. That looks good clean. Now you probably can't see it on the camera but there's some marks here and I'm just gonna place this on and clean up my hands. Okay, while I was doing this, I remembered a little trick about uh, getting your markings wherever you need them. So, let's say we're doing, um, you know, this wing here. Put some graphite from a pencil on here. I'm just throwing it right on the printed lines. Doesn't have to be a lot. So then, if I flick it over, Line it up, and I'm rubbing. Okay, then we pull it off, and I don't know if you can see, I can see. Curve there, there's the bottom curve. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a wing tip there, 
one right there, and one right there. And uh, that way, when you're gluing on your pieces, you know exactly where to put them. Okay, now that it's dry, I'm gonna fill in some of these little pin nail holes here. I'm just gonna use some wood filler. And uh, this stuff's drying out, but... It goes on real simple. Just like that. And uh, I'll use this stuff for um, tiny cracks, maybe in here and stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to use Bondo for the bigger gaps. Um, let's find a couple. No, that's not. I'll still use wood filler for this one. Cram that in there. Um, that one's not so bad. Clean that up. Uh, one like this. That's where the wood slivered up. I'll use some Bondo here and there. Anyway, I'm not going to show everything about it. But um, you just mix this up. And uh, there's a, some hardener in there in this mixing lid. And just mix up what you need. And the work time's pretty quick, so you don't want to make more than you can use immediately. Anyway, so I'll fill in some of these holes and uh, clean it up, sand it down a little bit. And then we'll skip ahead. We still have to do a few more things to this, but we're getting close. The next thing we're going to do is these uh, rivets. There's three on the front, three on the back. And so I found as much as I could to make them. These are one inch split balls. I got these from Hobby Lobby. It's, it was actually exactly enough. Six in a pack and uh, just a couple bucks. And they're actually the same size as these. It's just a little wooden spoon. I cut off the handle and sanded it down. And then I was left with this little deal here. And uh, that goes on like that. But that's the diameter is just a little bit too small and it's um, kind of rounder than I want. And this, the diameter is a little big and it doesn't raise as high as I'd like. These are um, called just buttons. These are what you would use to fill in some sort of um, lag bolt hole like if you're uh, putting a big bolt inside of, you know, like a staircase handrail and you want to plug the hole up this is what you'd use. So I think we're going to open this up and uh, try to use one of these because this is a little closer to what I would like. I'm afraid because these are uh, high profile that they get knocked off easier but <clears throat> so let's see. Yeah I'm, I think that'll work. I don't know until we sand them down a bit. There, there, there. Yeah. So these, as you can see, have a step. So these are called one inch, and one inch is the size of the hole that you'll drill, and then this bottom part will fit in like a little plug or a cap. Um, but we don't need that part, so I'm gonna sand off the bottom and round the top a bit. And then I'm gonna show you um, here, look at this. Because this is beveled, you know how these come up high? You can sand in a, uh, see how that, comes up it's not flat how you do that is uh, you can take sandpaper and lay it down here and then rub it and that way the piece will uh, get sanded in the high spot so if you have this kind of sandpaper adhesive sandpaper this is for um, one of these palm sanders I don't even have one of these kind of palm sanders but anyway you fold it in half here like this, stick it on like that. All right, then you have the exact profile that you need to put in here. So normally, let's move it to a flat side. It would kind of rock like that. So you just move it up and down until it's flat. All right, we got to go on the highest grit. What was that one? This is taking way too long. I don't know what kind of wood this is, but this is, uh, th I think, 36 grit, something like that. So, 
This might just rip it right out of my hands. We'll find out. But uh, I don't want to stand there for 10 minutes on each plug. with a little more sanding that's pretty good I'm gonna use um, actually epoxy for this and uh, that'll help fill in some of the bits as well and make sure that this does not come off alright so why am I using epoxy and not just wood glue well this is piece is um, right in a spot that can be knocked a lot so and I want the glue to kind of fill in some of my gaps. So anyway, two parts. A. This should be enough. Probably more than enough. To uh, one part B. That should be good. It helps that they're two colors because then you know when you've mixed it all. It doesn't take long. Smear some on. And this is just going to gush out. Actually, I probably should have got the other plugs ready. But I didn't. Okay, there we go. That should be good. And I'll just place it in the middle like that. That's good everywhere except for this side right here. I'm going to use this almost as a wood filler. I'll scrape the rest of it off soon, but anyway, that should be good, and that's not going anywhere. That's stuck right on there. Okay, this epoxy, let's uh, take a look at it. It's been on for hours, and it's still, I could easily put my fingernail in it. Um, not very good. So I'm going to chuck this stuff. I mean, it's kind of tacky still. It should be totally hard by now, but uh, I think it'll still cure, but I don't want to mess with it anymore. I'll have to get some new stuff. Um, I thought I was going to have to scrape it off and do it again, but it seems to be okay for now. So what I did, let me uh, catch you up here. I just put this template down. Uh, this is where the rivet is on the front. Just put a little pencil stab right there. And on the back, because this is flat wood, we're going to use this spade bit. And it has a centering pin. And then these are going to gouge in and make a nice clean cut. This is one inch. And remember the inside here, let's look at, yep, yeah, one inch. So this should fit right in nice. And uh, this is pretty long, but it's not long enough that it's going to stab through the other side of the shield. So, got it in the drill. And uh, I'm not going to go crazy here. I just want enough to uh, sink this in. So let's go for it.
And let's see how nice this slips in here. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. See that? A little bit of a mess. It's all right. There we go. Now we're going to do a little filler. Let's just get a, a blob of this stuff. We're not going to use that much. We don't need that much. And this is a resin, so it smells pretty bad. So I'm going to put the lid, lid on right away. And... Uh, There we go, that should be, that's probably way more than enough. Just a guess. And uh, spend a few minutes mixing. Well, it's, depends on how you mix, I guess. You gotta use this stuff all up real quick. So have your work ready. There's no time to mess around because it hardens fast. And uh, the more hardener you use, the quicker it's gonna harden. So I think that's probably good for mixing. All right, so there's a few spots. Let's, uh, got a card here, like a credit card type. Just gonna smear it on. And I'm doing this everywhere where uh, it's too big of a space for wood filler. Wood filler is good for like nail holes and stuff. Other than that, it's not so great. It's kind of flaky and it'll come out on you. That looks good. Let's flick it over. Now there's a couple spots here where the we added the wooden feather I needed to do. Let's see, right here, both sides, in here where these two pieces join. Okay, one, this side. It's already starting to get hard. Oh no, that's it. I'm gonna have to mix up more. I don't think I can get away with this. I can't even get it in. Yeah, that's it. Work time's over. Look at this. Already, it's chunky, so. Let's mix up another batch and go a little quicker. Oh, I hate the smell of this stuff. And uh, let's do definitely less hardener this time. Oops. Now it doesn't matter um, until you start mixing it. That's when the timer starts. So.
already. I got seconds left, I can tell. It's getting gummy. It's over. All right, so hopefully that's it. I really hope that's it. All those sides, all those sides. Can I do a little tiny bit here? Oh man, I'm pushing it. Tiny bit here in the corner. Come on, take it. There we go. I think, I think we're done. I don't think I can get away with doing it anymore. Yeah. All right, it's gonna have to, that's gonna have to be it. I'm gonna get this stuff out of here because it reeks. So time to clean up. I got some on my hands too, so. Well, it's been about uh, 10 minutes now and there's this in-between stage of rock hard and wet where you can shape it just a little bit. So I'm taking advantage of this time and just shaving down some of these high spots. So it's gonna be a lot less work come sanding. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna prime the shield, paint it. I'll show you how to do the handle and the strap and a few other things. So don't forget to watch part three and we'll wrap this project up. I'll get it up real soon.